Men often find themselves blindsided by a culture that hates authentic masculinity, and many have given in and succumbed to the ever-evolving culture and woke society. But not us. We are the remnant, faithful Catholic men from three different generations who reach through the radio to tackle current events that challenge our wills and empower the practice of the Catholic faith through thought-provoking discernment and prayer. So, if you're feeling overwhelmed and bombarded, it's time to turn your radio up and join us for The Remnant on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Remnant here on the Carolina Catholic Media Network. My name is Bill Snyder. It's wonderful to be with you, as always. And uh, on this show, if you haven't caught up with us yet, uh, we're on episode 29, so we encourage you to check out our podcast feed on the Carolina Catholic Media Network app, which is available on the Google Play Store and Apple App Store. You can check it out there, and you can also listen online. Uh, by simply going to carolinacatholicmedia.org. You head over there, uh, check out uh, our website, and you'll see a tab that says The Remnant right on the homepage there. You'll be able to listen to all the different episodes, all the back episodes. Um, If you haven't heard us before or you're joining us uh, late in the game, know that you can always find all of those episodes uh, on demand. As we like to say, we're on demand and online. So uh, we are also sponsored by The Remnant, uh, the Remnant is sponsored by the Fraternity of St. Joseph Men's Group, and you can visit fsjjourneyman.com to review the easy-to-follow resource documents and consider starting a chapter of the FSJ Men's Group in your own parish today. Uh, but it wouldn't be The Remnant without my good friend, Ray Haywood. Ray, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Looking forward to this time and fellowship, as always. So um, today's episode is exploring the divine design of community. And uh, we're going to get into that in a minute, but we're going to open in prayer and uh, we'll open with the binding prayer, the the, uh, band of brothers prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, help us to turn to you in humility and through obedience and discipline, place you into our hearts, our wills, our families, our faith communities, and ultimately our public square. Through the Holy Spirit, in the just model of St. Joseph, through the sacred heart of Jesus' name, we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, amen. Mm-hmm. So when Bill and I were discussing the next episode, uh, we went back to the past two. So episode 27 was generational effects of pushing down the heart of the boy. And then... Uh, Episode 28 was gifts understood and shared by an intentional father. So when we think back on those two episodes, it it clears the way for this episode of exploring the divine design of community. And community is where we actually bring our gifts, our God-given gifts out into our community. So we're going to start with... um, there's a couple of things I hope to get to cover. I'll touch on them now and hopefully we'll get a chance to discuss them as we go on. But uh, I intentionally wrote down a few things that uh, I would like to at least bring out into the awareness. So uh, just as in our marriage, our job should be looked at as vocations that we intentionally nurture into ministries. No matter how anti-cultural this may seem or be seen, That's why it's called fight the good fight. Our gifts are meant to be shared out in our communities. I will reference my two sons as examples. Both have service positions within our community. Nicholas is fortunate enough to be a a history teacher at Christ the King Catholic High School here in, um, in Charlotte, in North Carolina. It's a beautiful thing that he has. And Frankie, Frankie just started today. Uh, he was just hired and today is his first day as becoming a fireman for the um, city of Concord. So for Nicholas, I'm already watching him develop his ministry. I'm hearing it from some of the people that are in the parish of St. Thomas that know Nicholas um, 
uh, and they come to me, these other parents of children that are in my son's class. And they explain to me how he's being intentional in placing into the history that he teaches salvation history. So he's taking our faith and he's placing it into uh, world history. It's a beautiful way for him to build up his ministry. And it's, you know, it's a beginning for him. So I can't imagine what this is going to look like for him for five years or how many souls he's going to touch when it comes to the way that he's teaching these children intentionally. Now for Frankie, I don't know what his ministry looks like, but I could tell you that he's got a, a very charitable heart. He's intentional. So the community that he's going to serve is going to be better off for him being part of it. But uh, it's going to be interesting. And I'm going to try to help him develop what his ministry will look like in his position as being a firefighter. So um, I will give some meant to be shared out into our communities. I will reference as I said, my two sons in this process. Uh, so how do we accomplish building up our communities? The answer is simple. In our yes, meaning yes. In our yes, meaning yes, we accept all of the church teachings and we love others past full. In the clarity found in this acceptance, all that will divide us falls away as like scales from our eyes. I really want to stress that, how if our yes truly means yes, then there's nothing that divides us. Unconditional love mirroring our father's love, his command of us to love others as I have loved you in the new covenant teaching truly becomes our benchmark. And all of these, uh, the chaos that divides us, all of the worldly narratives, the one-liners that divide us should fall away community in our father's de design comes in unity with his will and is found in the sacrament of communion which means in union let's look at the message that this year's fsj resource of the saint joseph seven day family devotional shares on saturday for perspective so this is one day we're going to be looking at saturday in this seven day family devotional from the Fraternity of St. Joseph Men's Group Resources. Um, and this is what is shared. I'm, only get, I'm gonna hit on some of it. I'm not gonna hit on all of it. A charitable heart in our heavenly father's will for his family can be found in community. By God's design, charity is a virtue that is taught to us in the hands and at the hands of our loved ones in our formative years. Beginning with baptism, the sacraments serve as God-given gifts, grace-filled tools by which we become part of the family of God, the community of faith. As children of God, our first example of a charitable heart can be found when we come together as a community in holy fellowship during the sacrifice of the mass. In this community, of believers, we present our gifts of bread and wine, along with our petitions, we shouldn't forget that, along with our petitions on the altar of our Lord, where the Eucharist unites us with the communion of saints in the body of Christ, his church. Through the liturgy of the mass, our families, our domestic churches are transformed by the love story of sacred scripture and the Eucharistic celebration which enables us to cultivate virtue and use our God-given gifts to help each other along the way in our daily lives. Through charitable hearts, we support our brothers and sisters with our time, treasure, and talents. These gifts of self-giving love instill a peace-filled resolve into the lives of our families as they grow in sanctity through regular participation in sacred liturgy. Charity is our link to community. A charitable heart connects us with our hearts fully nourished by the liturgy of the word and the Eucharist. We take the good news of the Holy Mass out into the world and become witnesses to the gospel in our daily lives. And then the, 
the, uh, the day's devotion goes on uh, to describe St. Joseph as a model of charity. And I want to share this as well, because it gives us good perspective for the conversation that you know, we hope it'll ensue. So if we look to St. Joseph as a model of charity, we can discern this in his freely giving his yes to all the unknowns presented before him in his vocation of foster fathering the son of God, the word incarnate, and raising him in the faith in the community of Nazareth. We fathers, spiritual and paternal alike, need to seek out our charitable heart of St. Joseph and follow his selfless example in acceptance of our own vocations within our communities. In the same measure by which we measure, God reveals more of his divine providence for our families when we respond to our vocations with charitable hearts. It is in our yes to his call to our vocations as husbands and fathers that we begin to understand in part the boundless charitable heart of our loving and merciful father. In his vocation as head of the Holy Family, St. Joseph becomes the pillar of families and the protector of the Holy Church. In our vocations as spiritual and physical protectors of our families, we take our rightful place in salvation history as co-creators of God's divine design of transforming grace. When we fight against this vocation, we stumble and blind ourselves to our true calling as St. Augustine, one of the early church fathers, reminds us, our hearts are restless until they rest in God. The day's devotion goes on from there. You can go to the uh, fsjjourneyman.com website and download the full week of the St. Joseph seven-day family devotional for yourself, for yourself. There's also a YouTube link available to better understand the intent behind the devotional. Now, back to our yes meaning yes. It is in this acceptance that we step forward in our faith journey that we come to understand what is meant to not only believe in, but also to belong to the body of Christ, his church. When we hurt others, we hurt ourselves. We are the body. So when Bill and I were talking about this episode, what came to mind for me uh, almost immediately after those past two episodes of 27 and 28 was now that we understand fully the gifts, we've built up the, the heart of the boy. Now we understand how we build up the gifts within him as he's growing through life's lessons of wisdom shared by older men to younger fathers for them to understand the gifts. Now what do we do? We take those gifts and we bring them out into our public square and we change what we touch around us. We go back to what was shared with me in the beginning of the only thing we can change is what we touch at our tables if, as spiritual fathers at our altars and out in our communities and our God given gifts in our marriages complement well. But the gifts of our children, if we're wise enough to recognize them and develop them and share with them the vocation that leads to the ministries as we help each other along the way, I mean, this is beautiful awareness. Bill, what do you have? Yeah, you know, um, let me just say, Ray, that, you know, you uh, paint a beautiful picture for us in, in laying out the, the tapestry of what you really just laid out. Um, and... I, I want to offer just a couple things on community, um, kind of bouncing off of you. Uh, first, the first thing that came to my mind as you were talking was, I, I need to look up the, the, the scripture, because this is what comes to my mind um, for community and what you're talking about. I mean, from, from the very beginning of our, you know, existence as humans, God um, recognize that it's not good for us to be alone. Chapter 2 in the book of Genesis, verse 18 says, The Lord God said it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suited to him. So 
we talk about community, we talk about the family being that first community, husband, wife, child. We've talked about that quite a bit on this program. Um, but the result of that is that he reminds us that we are to fill the earth and subdue it, right? Like that's what we are, that's what we are supposed to be doing. Um, that is our mission that in, in life is, is that God said, fill the earth and subdue it, right? Be fruitful and multiply. And so it's, it's not just about our, you know, little tiny community. It's about the fact that we are to become a community. Um, and, you know, that is the way we are we're designed. Uh, and so this, this design of God is with purpose because each one of us is made completely unique, completely unique. Um, you know, I like to say our spirituality is as unique as our fingerprints, right? That means that everybody's uh, relationship with God is as unique as fingerprints, but uh, the fingerprint is a reminder that there are no two alike. Uh, there are no two, uh, you know, DNA structures alike. We are all completely unique. And in that uniqueness, we need to um, have a understanding that we are to use our uniqueness for the collective good. Amen. So, so just as Ray, you were talking about, you know, your your son Frank being a firefighter, that his ministry is going to be, um, you know, kind of revealed to him, and you're going to help him, you know, understand God's revelation for where his ministry is as a firefighter. The reality is, is that yes, he has a mission and a ministry um, in that firehouse, and that he might not know yet, um, but but it will come to um, you know, a it, it'll, it'll it'll come clear. It will be revealed. the The other thing is that if he doesn't use the opportunity, if he doesn't use his gifts in that, then the firehouse, then his then his other firefighters are lacking. Uh, one of the things that I always do when I think about community as well is uh, during my confirmation classes on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I use a um, a game, Mousetrap. Have you ever played Mousetrap, the little game Mousetrap? Well, here's the thing. If what I do is I wrap up each and every uh, piece in a gift bag, and I, and I give out the gifts to each individual student, and I tell them to open it up after they all have their gifts, and they don't even need any instruction. They know exactly what to do. I mean, you you have the green boot and I have the yellow guy and you have the crank and a bunch of other things, right? So they all know, just put it together. Well, this is part of the community. We have to have um, the willingness to put our pieces together in the body of Christ. If we don't put it together, the mousetrap doesn't work. Now, here's the thing. God, right? God. It sees the entire mousetrap, the whole Rube Goldberg device. We don't, right? We, I am, I, I mean, I might be the green boot, right? That just kicks people in the butt on the radio. I mean, that could be me, right? Uh, you know, you know, get your, get your button gear and do this, right? But, you know, that might be my gift. But here's the thing. I don't see, uh, other than the people that I'm, that I'm booting, I don't see how far that, that red stop sign swings and hits the green bucket and the green bucket dumps the marble down the blue stairs and blah, 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 right? If, if we don't use our gifts, if I don't kick you in the butt and you don't use uh, your gift to help the next person, this whole community cannot be achieved. God's great design, God's great plan cannot come to fruition. So that's my, those are my thoughts on community ray um and any other any other thoughts before we head off to the break when you're sharing that um what i immediately go to is how when people come into our family dealership and uh they, they 
experience, like, so a used car dealer is somebody who people don't like and people come in and they'll treat me poorly. And my sons will see this and they'll be like, dad, why'd you take that? I said, it's not for me personally, it's for the car salesman that they think is, uh, you know, trying to take advantage of them. And sometimes my sons get to actually sit through a whole process or maybe be around when someone comes to pick up the car after the purchase and they tell me, you know, this has been an experience like I've never had because I don't mirror them. I reflect well always, even when they're treating me poorly, I understand it's not me, Ray Haywood, it's me, the car salesman that they don't know who car salesmen take advantage of people. So if we take the personal things out of it and we love past fault and our yes means yes and everything, all of the, the, the chaos of the world becomes much clearer. And it also took me a lot of years to get here. I'm, uh, you know, this is wisdom and it's um, prudence. There's a lot of things that come into uh, my awareness that I have now that I'm fortunate enough to hand on to my sons because their challenges are way more than mine or my wife's ever were. So, you know, we as older men have to share these gifts have to recognize these gifts, have to enhance these gifts for our younger brothers. Tell them that their vocations are meant to be ministries, a vocation of marriage, a vocation in our jobs. You know, uh, we, we minister everywhere in life. If our uh, yes truly means yes. Hmm. Beautiful. Um, and so it's so good that we um, take some time to reflect on this. And when we come back from the break, we're going to be uh, talking about somebody who you probably have heard of before. His name is St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, so we're going to share with you just a little bit about his life and why we chose him for this particular topic of building community. Um, so we are going to do this right after these messages. So uh, stay tuned here at the Carolina Catholic Media Network. We'll be right back. Twenty twenty two is bringing many new and exciting changes to our Carolina Catholic Apostolate, built to communicate how to better learn, love, and live our Catholic faith. We begin with our name change to Carolina Catholic Media. This reflects the expanded scope of Carolina Catholic Radio to include the development of our podcast, streaming, social media, YouTube, and direct marketing platforms. Twenty twenty two is a very important year for the Catholic Church. As a result, Carolina Catholic Media will feature more local news, information, and conversation to reflect what's happening now and how it impacts our local Catholic community. Throughout the year, Carolina Catholic Media will showcase our Catholic schools and homeschools, the Charlotte Diocese 50th anniversary, and the two-year worldwide synod process that begins on the diocesan level. We encourage you to get involved, join us, and catch the spirit. The Carolina Catholic Media Apostolate is a 501c3 nonprofit. We are 100% funded by you. Please consider a donation, monthly tithe, or business sponsorship to support our mission and vision to spread the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith across the Carolinas. Thank you for discerning a role in our apostolate. May God bless you abundantly. Hello, my name is Ray Haywood, and I'm coming to you today to talk to you about the book that I wrote, Tools to Ready the Journey, A Father's Guide to a Faithful Family. This book can be purchased anywhere. But you can also go to the website of trjfathersguide.com where you will gain access to the resource documents, the chapter podcasts, as well as the social media platform links of Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This book has two audiences. The first audience is for the younger man. That's the title of the book, Tools to Ready the Journey. The second audience is for the older man. The subtitle of the book, A Father's Guide to a Faithful Family. That's for us to find value in the tools and awarenesses that are shared and hand them on to that next generation of leading men. As men, we need to understand that we cannot do this journey alone. I hope that this scratches at you an awareness and ignites your heart to visit that website of trjfathersguide.com. The Shroud of Turin is one of the most researched and studied relics in church history and profoundly impacts many who encounter its mystery. As a person of faith, looking at it through the eyes of faith, um, I don't think it can help but, uh, but touch your heart. 
something that we can look on, not only to bolster our faith in those moments of weakness, but also to deepen our faith and our appreciation, our intimacy with Christ. Join Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry as they examine the science of the shroud through the lens of faith. Really interesting scientific information that I, we didn't know about, uh, like the pollen from all the different regions of the world. That's all, as the shroud traveled around, it picked that up. Some of the mites, uh, things like that was really interesting to me. I mean, it, it's made you really want to believe it a lot more. It's impressive. Like humanly, I don't think like, that is another level of love. It's not a, a, a I'm going to say, like, oh, I love you, I'll give you a chocolate. No. I'm giving you more than my life. I'm giving you my suffering. Asking both experts and disciples, who do you say I am? Um, as far as who the man of the shroud is, I, as a, as a person of faith and kind of reviewing the evidence there, it, it seems that a convincing argument can be made that it's, it's Jesus of Nazareth. Visit patchworkheart.org slash shroud to learn more and get exclusive behind the scenes updates for your support. Welcome back to The Remnant on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome back here to The Remnant on the Carolina Catholic Media Network. I am Bill Snyder, it's wonderful to be with you. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in today and listening. Remember that you can always email us and find us at theremnantshow at gmail.com. Uh, but I want to uh, talk to you about our Saint of the Week. Um, and our Saint of the Week is none other than St. Francis of Assisi. And uh, last week, uh, we touched on St. Clare of Assisi, uh, the, the founder of the Poor Clares. But uh, today we're going to talk about St. Francis of Assisi. And St. Francis is someone who um, is widely, widely known throughout the world, not only just in Catholic circles, but um, throughout the world because of his, of his unifying message of trying to bring people together. And uh, St. Francis uh, was born uh, at Assisi in 1181, and he was um, a very, very, he was uh, the beneficiary of a very rich father. He had a very easygoing life uh, because of his father's wealth, wealth and permissiveness of the times. Um, so, you know, this, this was something that um, he, he just enjoyed that wealth, but what ended up happening was um, he uh, was known for going to these different wild parties and doing all these different things. Um, Thomas of Solano, his biographer who knew him well, um, he said this, in other respects, an exquisite youth, he attracted himself a whole retune of young people addicted to evil and consumed to vice. Uh, Francis said of himself during that time, I lived in sin. So he just, when you have when you have everything, um, you know you, you don't think you need anything. Um, but anyway, uh, so what ended up happening um, was that there was this encounter um, where Saint Francis did, didn't have a conversion overnight, but there was a realization that um, God had waited for him for 25 years. Um, and, and now it was time for Francis to kind of wait for, for the Lord. So he had a progressive understanding. Um, he began to, um, how do you want to say it? He began to uh, experience that this life was empty. Um, he finally got a call. For, to go to the Fourth Crusade, uh, which gave him a chance to go off to war. Um, but, but there was something that was missing in his life. Despite When you have everything, sometimes that understanding that uh, I'm, missing, I'm missing something more. I need to have more. I need to have more. I need to have more. That's what it was. And so one day when Francis was riding through the countryside, uh, Francis was a man who loved beauty, 
but he was also picky about food and he hated deformity. But he came face to face with a leper. And uh, he was repelled by the appearance and smell of the leper, yet Francis jumped down from his horse and kissed the leper. Uh, and when his kiss of peace was returned, Francis was filled with joy. He rode off and um, he later um, never saw that leper. And he realized that this was actually God, that um, God had given him a test to prove, have you really given up this life? Have you really uh, given up this, this life? Um, and so he continued searching for God. He continued searching for God, um, and which led him to the famous moment that pretty much everybody knows about in San Damiano. Uh, this conversion moment was where Christ uh, appeared to him on the crucifix in this little chapel of San Damiano and spoke to him, Francis, repair my church. And so he assumed that this meant this dilapidated church he was worshiping in. <laughs> it was crumbling building. And so he did. He rebuilt the church. Um, he used the money uh, from, from his father's, uh, in the, the, his inheritance, and he rebuilt the church. Now, um, he quickly realized that that wasn't what he meant, what God meant. It was rebuild the church with the capital C. And so, um, I don't want to say this. Francis then went on a mission to create community. And he stripped himself of all of his clothes, everything that is, um, the world gave him, <laughs> right? Um, in front of a crowd that had gathered, said he, stri he, uh, uh, he said, Pietro Berdoni, which was his father, is no longer my father. From now on, I can say with complete freedom, our father who art in heaven. Wearing nothing but cast off rags, he went off into the freezing, freezing woods singing. Robbers took his clothes and beat him. Um, but then, Fran, from, but then from Fran, then on, St. Francis had nothing and everything. He finally found what he was looking for, which was God. Right? It wasn't all the worldly possessions. It wasn't the rich enough. It wasn't war um, to go off and be a great warrior. It was that he was missing God. And so what then... Francis did was he founded the uh, Franciscans and companions came who wanted to follow his life. This was a very attractive thing. Um, and St. Francis, now, mind you, here's what they were doing, Ray. They were begging for garbage to eat because they, they had nothing. And this was attracting people. I don't know if that's attractive to you, but begging for garbage to eat <laughs> is not something that I would be immediately attracted to, but the holiness of these men. And so St. Francis knew that this was not only, this was his mission to create this community of men who had absolutely nothing. And so he, uh, he but he, he, but this was like kind of reluctance. He, he like, like he knew this was his mission, but he never wanted to found a religious order. Timmy thought that that was like too military. It was like, you know, this is an order. And so um, he never wanted to do it, but he knew it was his mission. So he did approach the Pope and the Pope gave him, uh, to make the long story short, the Pope gave him permission to found the order. Um, and it is the most widely, widely, now there's a, a competition between the Benedictines and the Franciscans for, for, um, the the first order right like you can kind of google it there's a competition like who, who really was first um franciscans and those who follow that way of life will say yeah saint francis founded the first religious order um but the beautiful thing about this the amazing thing about this is that um it has permeated the world in such a way and and really uh, helped the church grow and understand what it means to live in poverty and to take up the cross daily 
and follow him, which is all that St. Francis wanted for, for people to do. So here we are. This is, this is what uh, happened. And of course, we have that beautiful prayer of St. Francis Easy that we can uh, get into. But Ray, do you have any uh, thoughts about St. Francis? Yeah, absolutely. So when I contemplate what you just brought to us, the first thing I think of is the Band of Brothers prayer. I mean, he created a Band of Brothers. And uh, also what I think about is that every sinner has a future and every saint had a past and how all of the challenges that the sinners meet with in their lives are truly what transforms them into being saints. Um, I've had similar experiences in my own life that, you know, you have to live through certain things in order to have the wisdom to understand, to turn away. So there's, there's beauty in all of this. And um, we all have the opportunity of becoming saints. So um, the communion of saints in heaven. We make it to heaven with saints, you know. Amen. <laughs> the first community, um, you know, you shared that there's like, you know, who's first and everything. But that's the reason why we chose St. Francis of Assisi is because of the community that he built. So that's a very important thing. And when I think of the image, the images that come up when you look at St. Francis of Assisi, there's birds around him, there's life around him, the Holy Spirit is around him. You know, um, when you, whenever you see an image of a saint and you see birds around it, it's probably going to be St. Francis of Assisi that you're looking at, the image of. So um, mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, spin right into my remanded challenge. So my remanded challenge for this week is for us all to commit to all that is needed for us to accept in our yes to mean yes, to truly love our brothers and sisters in Christ unconditionally, past their faults or what we believe to be their faults. Who knows if it's their faults or if the faults lie within us. But when we have that acceptance of our yes, meaning yes, there's no more divide between us because love never fails. As St. Augustine reminds us, our hearts are restless until they rest in God. So my question to you, my brothers, are Are you restless? If you're restless, you need to re-examine your yes, meaning yes. Because when your yes means yes, the, the, you're not pointing fingers anymore. You know, you're, you're, there's nothing that divides you. Um, you understand that our Heavenly Father sees all. He knows all and all is for good. And as Bill was um, um, pointing out, we don't get to see it all. God sees it all. So what we don't know the depths of the hearts that we touch or the, the need for the suffering that, that builds around us. When we have it all, we don't need. Suffering is necessary for us to step closer. So I encourage you to recommit to your yes and for it to truly mean yes with intent toward sharing in a peaceful resolve that can only be found in unconditional love and share this awareness with our younger brothers. You know, these three episodes are, uh, are, are, are beautiful when you listen to them in succession and you contemplate them past just listening. Uh, you know, you scr we're scratching at you. We hope you turn the page on this yourself and you recognize the gifts that were given to you, the gifts of your marriage, the gifts of your children, the gifts that we're supposed to and meant to in God's divine design to bring out into our communities and help each other along the way. Yeah, Ray, um, beautiful stuff, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, you know, uh, in, in the same vein, I actually have a song for you to listen to. And uh, you, I want you to, it, it's not a religious song, not, not even, it's actually written by uh, an atheist, uh, Dave Matthews. All right. I want you to listen to this song, Dave Matthews, Ants Marching. Uh, this week, if you can, that's my romantic challenge. Listen to this song. Pay attention to the lyrics. In fact, Google the lyrics while you are listening to the song. 
Uh, and the reason the reason I t tell you to listen to that song is because it has a lot to say about what happens when we don't use our gifts and we don't use them well. We no longer have a diversity of thought. We're like ants marching in a single line. We no longer have a diversity of, um, um, you know, interests in society. It all becomes a very myopic thing. So I, I, I use that song quite a bit in ministry. Um, and uh, my students uh, who, <laughs> who like Dave Matthews, uh, they sometimes go to a concert, they go to a Dave Matthews band concert, and they and they tell me, uh, like, you know, a couple of years later, they go, you know, you ruined that song for me. He played that song, and all I can think about is uh, is Jesus, when, Jesus and religion. When, 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 when I'm at that concert, listening to that song, I say, well, I did my job then, didn't I? Uh, but the but point is that uh, take some time, listen to that song, and reflect on the lyrics, because it is so, so, so important uh, that we that we understand the weight and the responsibility to use our gifts properly and in the, the right way God intended them for, for them to be used. Um, so with that said, uh, that's all the time we have for you here today on The Remnant, but uh, please stay tuned and know that um, next week, this next week, we're going to be uh, entering into the share -thon for the Carolina Catholic Media Network. Uh, it's 36 hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the 22nd. I'm sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the 22nd through the 24th um, of June, at, uh, and I'm the Sacred Heart. Uh, so please stay tuned and uh, tune into that, especially. We need your uh, financial support to keep shows like The Remnant on the air. But um, until next time, from all of us here at The Remnant and the Carolina Catholic Media Network, may God bless you and your families. Thank you for joining The Remnant today. For more information about us, Email the remnant show at gmail.com. That's the R E M E N A N T show at gmail.com.